Hello, mate. Right. Um, oh, an excellent, an excellent judgment you've been telling me about from 1703. Um, yeah. some fantastic <laughs> news <laughs> for the for the naysayers out there. Anyway, yeah. But um, this is this is this is great. This is great. Basically, it blows all the nonsense out of the water. Yeah, so, yeah. And it's a very interesting judgment. Um, it actually is the foundation of the latent judgment, which the one that they talk about in constitutional law is actually Entick versus Carrington. However, this is predates Entick versus Carrington, uh, and actually sets the foundations for Entick and Carrington. So this is the source judgment. <clears throat> okay. Right. So basically, I'll share the screen and just, uh, well, sort of read it off, I suppose. People yeah. can read it themselves, but it just... Um... Is, it, is this going to be provided as a download or anything? Or Yeah, I'll, I'll put the link. There's the link, down, there's the link down at the bottom of the document anyway. But we'll I'll give you the link so you can put it at the bottom. Yeah. Okay, so this is 1703. So I hated history at school. Um, you both, mate. <laughs> but um, I actually quite enjoy this now. And you need to understand what was going on at the time so that you actually get to see understand better the context of this. Mm. So remember, it was the bloody revo bloodless revolution. Um, and... Uh, with that, what we uh, had is 1688, the Bill of Rights. We've, we'll be bringing out an updated video because there's so much more on the Bill of Rights that still we haven't made videos on. Mm. So then in 1700, basically, uh, the king still wasn't doing what he wanted. Basically, William was a warmonger and, and he literally was bleeding the English dry and set up the Bank of England uh, in 1694 to try and uh, get money and this. Mm. But it was still fresh in the memories of a lot of the people within their uh, living memory, mm. what happened. And with the Bill of Rights, basically, uh, it's it's got one clause in it, one statement in it, which is uh, exactly all it comes down to. We've talked about this many times. Nothing can be done to the prejudice of the people in any of the said premises. Yeah. And one of the said premises is your ancient rights and liberties. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So basically the king had forgotten by 1700. Um, and so they uh, brought out the Act of Settlement 1700, which removed the king's ability to load the judiciary with his mates, okay? And also uh, set up the secession of the uh, continuing mon monarchy in agreement with parliament. Right. So that there totally uh, independent, made the judiciary totally independent. Um, so this judgment came out in 1703. It was Ashby versus White and is a is a classic or or if you find it this is about classic talk law so how to sue people okay mm. and basically the the chap uh ashby was uh peed off because the guy white and atal wouldn't let him vote but he met the criteria of owning land at so much worth and blah 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 so indirectly, uh, it, it's uh, addressing the issue of voting. Um, but basically, what he says, uh, it went through a number of appeals, and this judgment, uh, what I've, I'm quoting from here, uh, was appealed by uh, was upheld by the majority of the House of Lords. Mm. A great majority is what's written in the book. Right. So he started off and he said, okay, by the common law of England, every commoner hath a right not to be subjected to laws made without their consent. So the Mark Steeles and all of you who are putting up your no consent badges, here's your common law, which supports that. Mm. 
Okay. However, he continued without evidence, but his logic and reason was as follows, which is a presumption. Okay. Because it, and he was referring to consent, um, cannot be given by every individual man in person by reason of number and confusion. Therefore, that power is lodged in their representatives, elected by them for that purpose, who are either at that time, you could only vote for knights, citizens, or burgesses. So, uh, interestingly enough, that was a bit of voter rigging around that time as well. There's a surprise again. Yeah. So, it's nothing new, the voter rigging. Um, now, uh, and in there, he points out an example of voter rigging. Basically, anybody could vote who was a freeholder, uh, but the plebs obviously didn't vote for who the, they wanted. And so they basically changed it. They made it that you have to be a freeholder and your land must be worth X pounds, uh, which obviously most of the little guy kicked most of the little guys out the uh, uh, voting field. Mm. Okay. Now, you need to remember as we go through this now, the Bill of Rights is the source authority, okay, of Parliament, the government, the monarch, and the judiciary. Yeah. So it goes on to explain about voting, okay, the franchise. So but what he had to say about it in his explanation, this is a noble franchise and right, which entitles the subject in a share of government and legisla legislature. Do you want to highlight that on the screen so yeah. people can see work and follow it? Okay. That's it. Now, he excludes the judiciary because he fully understood the importance of an independent judiciary, which mm -hmm. he goes on to explain. Um, so he continues then to affirm equity will not suffer wrong without a remedy. Those are the words I use. He puts it in a different way. Okay, what he's saying is for want of right and want of remedy are convertibles, i.e., uh, if you're wronged, you get a remedy. Yeah. So the two are uh, two sides of the same coin, though. I mean, uh, uh, yeah, two sides of the same coin. So he continues, if a statute gives a right, then common law will give remedy to maintain it. Right. So that they go straight back to this one. Okay. If you don't consent, uh, then you're under common law. And if you granted a right by statute, as he was the right to vote, that right was denied by a public officer. And therefore, the common law will give you a remedy. Yeah. Um. Now, he really uh, emphasizes judicial independence and the duty that the judiciary have to hold parliament and government to account. Love it. Okay. Yeah. So he goes on to say the justice's oath creates an individual duty for each justice to determine matters, and he's specifically confirming to parliament, affecting parliament and its agent, the government where he says, where parliamentary matters come before us, i.e. into the court, as incident to the cause of action concerning the property of this subject, okay, voting rights, which we in duty must determine. Okay, it's their obligation to determine parliamentary matters. Parliamentary matters includes um, acts of parliament. Mm -hmm. Okay, though the incident matter may be parliamentary, i.e. if it comes from parliament, the problem, we must not deter, and then really emphasizes, but are bound by our oaths to determine it. There you go. Okay, mm. so he's absolutely clear. Yeah. The judiciary is the control of tyranny and what's going on now. Yeah. So the rule of law, he went on then and defined it as, the law consists of not particular instances, but in reasons that rule them. Okay. 
I've been talking about this. I'm not a great friend of uh, jury trials for this precise reason. Mm. You cannot. Uh, a jury does not explain their decision. No. Logic and reason prevails. Okay. And that's called the rules. And uh, that's called ratio descendi, dissidendi, which affirms the rule of law must be rational, which is why you can appeal judge made rulings. So uh, this one here, basically, the guy got awarded damages because another state actor wouldn't let him vote. Hmm. Um, however, if you're looking at taxation or any of these things, and council tax is a big one at the moment, all right, what it's made clear is if a statute gives a right, the common law will give a remedy to maintain it. The source authority of those governing is the Bill of Rights. The Bill of Rights says nothing can be done to your prejudice. Okay? Mm -hmm. So if whether you vote or not makes no difference. No. Okay? Because if they vote in accordance with authorizing the monarch to raise money under Article 4 of the Bill of Rights, that's in breach of the Bill of Rights, which is the source authority. Therefore, you, don't, you can't, won't sue them under the taxation. You'll sue them under the Bill of Rights. <laughs> okay? Um, so anything to my prejudice, okay, and that's my ancient rights and liberties, i.e. my birthright as it was reaffirmed in 1700. Mm -hmm. I'm entitled to remedy under the common law. And if where a man is injured in one sort of right, he has good action, why shall he not have it in another? Yeah. Therefore, basically, the whole thing about uh, the franchise, the voting, it does not matter. Because if they do anything to your harm with the new statute, you just simply sue them under your ancient rights and liberties of their source authority, which is a statute, the Bill of Rights. That's where our remedy lies. Which is what this guy done. Yeah, exactly what this guy did. Simple as that. Yeah. So like I said, this here is the foundation for Entick versus Carrington in 1765. And this is the foundation for why uh, Leighton got his damages award from Bristol and Suter. Fantastic. So this here, uh, hopefully people will really actually see the power of this. Uh, so all you common lawyers, look, there's the law. Okay? Your remedy is in there. It's telling you how to get your remedy. You don't need to go and um, occupy buildings under Article 61 and that. Just sue the buggers. If they harm you, you sue them. Well, yeah, I mean, this is where we've got to go. You know, it's not yeah. it's not quite as simple as just going to sue them. But yeah, it's uh... Uh, yeah, no. But basically, what's happening now is we get the computer, we got the data, and people are starting to learn to filter through it. Mm, aren't they? And there's more than us than them. Yep. As fast as they try and shut anything down, uh, won't work. No. Uh, so. Hopefully, uh, people see uh, it's got nothing to do with the person. It's got nothing to do with voting. It says it absolutely clear there. If you get harmed by a statute, then common law will give you the remedy. Yeah. And guess what else? There is one justice's oath, one judicial oath. A magistrate is bound by this just as much as the highest Supreme Court judges. Well, it has to be, they doesn't it? all have equal authority, and they all must deal with this. And since yeah. 1615, the rules of equity have prevailed over the common law, uh, and therefore the magistrates need to start acting honorably and equitably, doing what's right, doing their job, Stop listening to the legal advisors. They've got no idea what they're on about anyway. Uh, otherwise, they would be bringing this out before the magistrates and telling the magistrates, hang on, you can't do that. You can't kick somebody out of their house. 
There Ign- is no debt. Ignorance of the law is no excuse. Yeah. The end. Absolutely. And that's a good place to end on. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for your time again, Mark. It's fantastic. Okay, Brian.